All right, welcome to the June 14th um, Bicycle Pedestrian Subcommittee meeting. We have um, not an entirely full complement of members, but we've got enough. So we'll go ahead and get started. Thanks for joining us. This meeting is being recorded. It will go to Northampton Open Media where it will live forever, as long as forever, whatever that means for Northampton Open Media. Um, and first on the agenda is, I have to go double check this. Um, I think we're doing public comment. So if anyone has um, public comment, um, they'd like to um, bring up that's not otherwise on the agenda, we can go for that. All right, seeing none. Um, we'll move on to the agenda items. And this, um, Donna, will be for you primarily. We just wanted to, um, Donna asked that this be put on the agenda. Um, DPW put some blocks down on various locations, which is what the listing is. So Donna, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Yep, hi, good morning, everyone. Um, so we had um, gotten a series of complaints about the crosswalk on New South Street um, just before the Academy of Music. Um, and I know that some time ago, there was a temporary installation of barrels that were filled with sand. Um, that were taken out because it was sort of creating a traffic issue. So we we sort of resurrected this idea because we had some extra blocks in the backyard here um, and thought that we would create um, a scenario where folks could cross more safely in that crosswalk because, um, you know, when the traffic queues to go straight or left through that intersection at Main Street, um, cars run down the right hand side um, and are creating two lanes where there are not two lanes and that is uh, infringing on the crosswalk um, and it's also infringing on bicycle space and, and folks who may be you know, walking in the gutter or something. Um, so we tried to strike a balance in this installation between creating a safer space for pedestrians in that crosswalk um, and then also kind of experiment with um, making a bicycle lane. It's not a full five feet, it's four and a half feet, um, but we wanted to kind of just create that separation. Um, and and I, I get that it's only for, you know, like 50 feet or something, but um, we just wanted to kind of model this and see what everyone's thoughts were on it. So that's the first place we did it, um, and then we did it up by the high school, um, across from the high school um, by Woodlawn in the area where we uh, recently uh, banned parking uh, on that side of the road. So we we um, created a, a, an actual you know five foot bike lane, a uh, separated bike lane for um, for a pretty good stretch, and and that also kind of opens up that crosswalk a little bit. Um, you know, better sight lines for everyone. So I'm just kind of interested in people's feedback or comments on that or what you've heard or what you have personally experienced. Um, I'm going to have to yank it before our plow operations because um, I have no way to be ice um, in, in that space. Um, but I, I am interested in, in any comments you have on the installation. Go ahead, James. Uh, it sounds great. Thank you for that, Donna, and for the um, the the care and attention to bike pad needs in those two pinch points. Um, I'm curious, uh, and I will. I have not seen them yet, and I will definitely um, ride my bike in both places and and uh, you know try to experience it from the cyclist perspective and give any feedback. Just a question, though, uh, right now. Can anybody update us on the status of the redesign at the NHS? Uh, we know that uh, Fuss and O'Neill did a design. There was a public hearing that probably most or all of us were at. Um, and uh, you know what happens to this temporary installation might, or what we decide to do might be affected by what is uh, going to happen uh, following that Fuss and O'Neill design. 
or so uh, it, yeah so fuss did a uh what we would call a feasibility study definitely not a design i mean this was more of a you know what might we be able to do and where might we be able to do it um so since since I, and I'm actually going to be giving an update on this at the next TPC, but you'll get a preview. So we we have signed a design contract with Fuss and O'Neill um, to actually generate a, a a hard design now to to actually like you know give me a piece of paper you know that I can put out to bid, which is not a piece of paper; it's like a hundred pieces of paper. Um, so that's it. You know, going to be a process, but we did. Uh, initiate that contract with them probably, um, I don't know, a month ago now. You know, it takes some time to get that documentation together. So they've started their process. You're going to see, you know, survey out there and, and, you know, there'll be more robust traffic counts to do in internal movements and pedestrian counts. Um, so you'll definitely start to see some uh, activity out by the high school. This temporary installation doesn't affect that. I mean, it, it's just, I let them know, hey, I dropped some blocks here, you know, and I want to sort of pull the audience um, and just see like, do people like this? Do people hate this? Is this something you want to incorporate into a design potentially? Um, this is just me experimenting um, and everyone may hate it, in which case, fine, I'll, I'll remove it. So that's the joy of a temporary consideration. So um, this doesn't really, affect that other than just to sort of create um conversation. Thank you. Did you have a comment? I'm glad to go after Elena. Okay. Elena. Hi, thanks Nick. Um well I saw these come up around town. I don't ride these routes very frequently. I avoid the um I used to ride through the high school intersection every day um but I now avoid it um and go a longer more complex route home. Um I was excited to see these. I think it was surprising to see it, um, considering that it hadn't been brought to this committee um, for discussion. I know we've talked about the high school quite a bit, um, but other locations throughout the city. Um, I'm curious um, how these two, the high school is obvious and even South Street is pretty obvious because I know that's a really challenging place, but are there other places in the city that could use this treatment um, on a pilot basis? Because I think that is really exciting. Um, and also to get drivers familiar with what protected bike lanes are as we move into the main street redesign where obviously it's not gonna look like that, but we'll have a similar um, feel for cyclists. Um, and then I guess in a question, and this might be more of a conversation for the TPC when you give the update on the high school um, was around how Fuss and O'Neill were chosen um, for the design process. Um, to be um, frank, I guess, <laughs> they're not maybe the most progressive um, and maybe don't come up with the most creative um, solutions um, and progressive, I'm saying, to ped and um, um, bikes. And um, traditionally their designs have been really car centric. And so I'm just curious how that decision was made and if um, bids were brought out to other design uh, companies. Um, I know we've We've been really, at least the public has been really happy with what tool has come up with for Main Street. Um, so would have liked to see or hope to see in the design a little bit more of a progressive um, bike ped infrastructure around the high school. Thanks. Yep. The um, so uh, sorry, I I I, I can um, be quiet and uh, talk to her if you. Uh, I think I can respond to that. Whatever. I think it'd be great if she could respond. Yeah. That's great. Um, I just, but Donna, you might also add that um, in your response, you know, Preston O'Neill was the one who did the design for King Street, the new segment on King Street. Um, so I think it really depends on who in the organization is is um, hired, but I'll let Donna um, talk about the specifics of um, the choice there. Uh, yeah, just um, your first question first though. So. You know, we have a uh, limited amount of time to put up any sort of temporary installation. Um, so, you know, I've got sort of a, a really tight window um, to 
to do any sort of um, uh, temporary installation or trial run of anything. So, um, you know, I think that um, as an operations person, it's it, we need to move. You know, so I I I love the conversation. I love to talk, but but we just you know when I have a window, I've got like four months. Um, so, you know, I had extra blocks and here they are and we're putting them up and if you hate them, you know, great. And if you love them, great. And, you know, but I, I can't, I, I mean, as much as I want to sort of, um, generate conversation, sometimes we just need to make a move. Um, and that's what we did with these installations. I am more than happy to entertain any other locations that you think you might want to do this in. Um, and if I have more blocks laying around the backyard, I, I'm happy to give this a shot and see what the community thinks about it. Um, so, it, you know, that can certainly be part of the conversation today. And that's why I wanted this on the agenda today. So if you say, hey, on, you know, X and such street from point A to point B, we'll go look at it and I'll see what I've got and if we can do it and, and then we can fill the audience again. So that's kind of the first piece. Um, regarding Fuss and O'Neill, Fuss and O'Neill does a huge amount of work for us. Um, they, they are intimately familiar with the city, with our staff. Um, they have done a lot of design for us and, and we, from a, a sort of administrative operational standpoint, find them to be quite good. Um, there are firms that I deal with in all manner of projects with public works who sort of get their own agenda and do it that way. Um, and that's not what we're looking for. We're, we're looking for um, a, a better communication process. And that's what we have with Plus and O'Neill. Plus and O'Neill did the feasibility study in this area because they're fully used for many of our transportation projects. Not all, but many. Um, there are certainly a lot of firms who could have come in here and responded to something um, if we were to put it out um, for a bid. Um, so if we were to say we want requests for proposals from engineering firms, the level of effort that we would have had to do to create a scenario where we could have people responding to that is going to take this process and it's going to drag it out 12 or, or 16 months um, because we have to generate, you know, a document this thick that we then put out to, you know, a variety of firms who then respond to it, where we have to sift through everything and, and try to make a decision. Um, so it, I certainly hear what you're saying, and I don't think that it's a bad thing to have competition or multiple people who come in, you know, my orders were to affect immediate change. Um, and the community is pushing hard for something to happen here. And, you know, for me to sort of say, okay, everything needs to stop. And you know, we're gonna go through a process where we have to generate a, a, a document that firms can can, can keep on. Um, while in a perfect world may be a, a great idea, and then you pick who you think is best, that is a really time consuming process. So it's very difficult when you know the school is calling for action, the community is calling for action, everyone wants something done three days ago. And as it is, we're looking at a multi-year process to, to get something done. You know, we were very clear with Boston O'Neill about what we want and how we want it and sort of the forward thinking, um, you know, cutting edge complete streets treatment that we're looking for for this roadway. And, and they do a lot of work all over the state and they get it. Um, so I think what I would say is we're confident um, that they can provide what we're looking for. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to have 14 foot travel lanes and, you know, no raised crosswalks and, it, you know, that's not what we're going to come back with here. That, that's not what the community is looking for. Um, but I, I think there does need to be an understanding by everybody that the more conversation we have around this and the more we sort of put this out, the longer everything's going to take. So when folks get frustrated with city government, they're like, nothing's happening, nothing's moving, why is this taking so long? 
you know, that's uh, the unfortunate reality of the situation is that we would have been delayed another full calendar year on this. And I don't know that the community would be tolerant of that. So it's not, you know, maybe not the answer you're looking for, but that's the reality of the situation. No, I think that's super helpful to hear that additional context and totally agree that it's an urgent issue to move forward more quickly rather than um, bog it down with bureaucratic bids and things of that nature. So that makes a lot of sense. I'll just follow up and say, I'll put my vote in for liking the protected bike lanes and would love to see more and would be curious to hear from um, the group, you know, what other locations in the city they might recommend for this similar treatment. And then also look forward to engaging um, on the high school project. Um, and really excited to hear that you feel confident, DPW feels confident about their ability to bring forward thinking to that project. Thanks. Yeah, and, and I'll also say, I mean, just for additional context, it took us more than three months to get a design contract signed with them. That's how long, it, you know, just to get a proposal that we were comfortable with, that made sense to negotiate a fee. That was a three month process. So if we had, you know, gone out for quotes and, it, you know, that's that's where that year long process was coming from. So just it was like we knew who we wanted to work with, you know, but just to get through that process was was lengthy. So thank you. Um, so I, I just want to kind of build on those same comments. Um, Donna, I'm I'm pretty excited about them. I've seen the one and kind of experienced it both as a biker and a pedestrian by the high school. Uh, and I think it's a kind of a necessary, uh, if not sufficient, um, and it's great to have those things. And I also appreciate your invitation to kind of be suggesting other things that we might be able to kind of plan on on kind of moving forward. And so thank you for that, uh, for that openness and invitation, because I think it would be great to kind of brainstorm some of those. And as blocks are available and time to kind of be kind of just putting these little things out there to see how they can move forward and to kind of you know just gradually be building towards a more comprehensive solution. So thank you. Yeah, the biggest problem I have with protected bike lanes is I have no way to de-isolate. That, that is the challenge with protected bike lanes. I love protected bike lanes. I put protected bike lanes all over the city. I have absolutely no way to remove snow from them. And, and I have no way to keep them de ice on an ongoing basis because they are protected. Um, so I, I cannot get my plow in there. The, the narrowest plow I have is, is, is nine feet, and I need more than nine feet to operate. So, you know, I love these installations, and that's why I'm saying, like, I've got a really narrow window to do this, and then I have to yank them. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure how communities in the Northeast install these and keep them de ice without sort of a fleet of, you know, white women de icing equipment. Um, and the staff necessary to operate that equipment. Um, but I'm certainly all ears if you guys know of something. Um, sort of working on on that and connecting to um, how this might uh, um, help uh, people visualize, uh, especially the changes on Main Street. Um, We've talked with tool design to look at extending the um, the boundaries of the project for Picture Main Street down to the South Street Bridge. Mm. Um, so looking at where, so just on that side, so that the protected bike lane might start as it's going into Main Street, but be part of that construction project. So maybe it's not just a, you know, a, every year a temporary thing for, um, South Street. So they're going to be incorporating their um, into the, as they move forward to the 75% design, they're going to be looking at how they might be able to treat that um, um, as part of the overall project. And so this is a good test um, uh, for that. Um, James? Thanks. Uh, just a follow up on this discussion, I'm wondering how uh, this committee, the bike ped committee, which has a lot of deep experience with bike ped issues over decades, uh, can be most effective during the design process for these and, and other projects going forward. 
Uh, just wanting to really be play, uh, a proactive and uh, and thoughtful and helpful resource for Fuss and O'Neill in this case and for other design firms in, in future cases. You know, I'd like to really have open communication with them and um, and be able to weigh in. The details matter a lot in, in all of these designs and uh, they may not know some things that, that we can help with. Well, certainly for the picture of Main Street, you know, we'll have another um, probably touch point later as we get closer to 75 and 100% design. So that's, I, I can speak uh, on that piece, but, you know, DPW, I don't know if Donna, you had any thoughts about the high school one, but that's, I mean, that's a completely different process because it's not a tip process. It, yeah, I mean, I think what I would like to do for that process, and and so remember, I'm I'm under, you know, like major time constraints to you know produce something, um, and and you know we we kind of just kicked this off. I mean, I'm at the place where it's like, okay, how old is this sewer line? You know, like no one's thinking about the sewer, you know, but like we have to think about the sewer, so. Um, just we were wondering the sewer line is from like before 1900, you know, so like now we have sewer issues, you know, so that's kind of where we're at with the high school right now. I, I think what I'd like to do, I mean, I'm here every month, I'll just kind of check in with you guys, let you know, like, okay, this is where we're at. We've sort of gotten over our sewer issues and now we're actually looking at the road, you know, but we're, we're sort of stuck in utility land right now. So I don't, I, I don't even really have any comments. Um, but what I don't want to do is, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to say this is what we're going to do and this is how we're going to do it without having kind of pulled the audience here and had a little bit more of a conversation and say, this is what we're thinking about doing, you know, do you guys have any comments about this before we go down this road? So but we're not even to that point yet, though, because we're we're still in water and sewer. So the water lines are also, you know, 1900s era. Um, so this is turning into a little bit of a, um, a project. It's very hard for us to go for any sort of uh, roadway treatment over utilities that are like, you know, 150 years old, 130 years old. Um, now get it right. Uh, get it right the first time. Uh, yeah. So I, and and back to um, New South Street. Um, interestingly, I I have not gotten any positive comments. Um, I've gotten all negative comments. Everyone in the car hates it because they say <laughs> that um, you know it's making the traffic queue longer. Um, I was actually going to install those blocks all the way to the end of that solid white fog line. Um, up to the bike, up to the yellow sign that says share the road. Um, and I did not, based on sort of, you know, the idea that I was going to help traffic all the way back up through the prior intersection. So I sort of concluded that installation sooner than I otherwise would have because I have timing issues on those lights anyway. That's a whole separate conversation. Um, and I, I just didn't want to create a, a terrible bottleneck, but I wanted to just kind of do enough to see what it would look like. Um, and this is, you know, the idea behind the trial. Like, I'm, I'm not necessarily, this isn't necessarily exactly how I wanted it, but, you know, it's close enough. But I will just tell the group that every comment I've gotten on this is people telling me to take it down. Um. Thanks for letting us know that. That's that's helpful uh, context. Um, I'll ask pedal people and and other bicyclists that I interact with uh, if they have feedback, and I can email. Um, I will say that in some recent reading that I've done and thinking, uh, queuing traffic isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's a frustrating thing when you're in it. Um, it doesn't necessarily intrinsically be bad. So it's useful feedback, but it's it only goes so far to what the bigger picture we might want to be creating of uh, in, in invitation, you know, incentive to get out of your car and bike when you can go by. Um, 
you know, what kind of streets do we want to be creating? So anyway, I just wanted to throw that in there, but uh, I'll, I'll work on getting some other feedback, see, see what other people think. Thanks. Yeah, there's a loud constituency, a loud motor vehicle constituency, and they are uh, unhappy with me. Well, the ones that have told you anyway. Well, that's why I think, you know, I think James had asked what what could this committee do to sort of think about um, a, a, about these projects and how to participate and, and push some of these things. It sounds like advocacy um, for people to re uh, respond to the, the temporary installations or um, and not even advocacy, just sort of commenting from another perspective so that we have so that there is potentially more of a balanced um response that comes with these um comes with these things and just so i'm clear uh what what is the best way to deliver the feedback is it emailing to yeah just you, you can email bbw info um that that would be helpful and um, and i'm also it, sorry carolyn i you know if if you i mean we're sort of on the spot like discussing this right now so maybe we can't think of a place where you want to see these installations, but you know, if you think of something, just get a hold of me, you know, do you have info is really the best uh, email address. Um, and just say, hey, you know, we're looking at, at X location, you know, what do you think about this? And you know, I when we put these up, generally, I mean, if you notice like a lot of straightaway, you know, where maybe people are driving faster than they should be. Um you know, so we have we at least have some level of visibility, um, and and I need to have appropriate road width. I mean, New South Wales is tough. I've mean, only got a four and a half foot bike lane, though, which is not ideal. You know, so there is like a little bit of engineering analysis that has to go into this, and it's not necessarily possible in all locations that I'd like to do it in. Um, but you know, we, we, we're going to have to look at it, is what I'm saying. So if you make a suggestion, you know, we'll do the best we can to get it done. But it can well, alternatively, you could, um, if something comes up in between meetings, we can put it on the agenda for, you know, group discussion as well, um, or in instead of just sending a um, note off to info at DPW. James? You're muted. Sorry, uh, just, just a quick minor point. Um, four and a half feet is not a problem. Uh, in When it's not uh, in the door zone, if it's not next to, next to parked cars, that's fine. I mean, as long as the road condition's in in good shape. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm not delighted with how that gutter is on New South Street, and that was one of the other things that I, I was mindful of. I mean, it's like a storm drain, you know, like a pothole, or, you know, it's not really a pothole, like you even pack, it's sort of a skimmer, you know? So like I, I wasn't delighted that this was a beautiful smooth surface and everything was good. I mean, I I, I like to see you guys have a little bit of a you know. Thank you. I, I I don't want to belabor this and kind of shift us potentially onto another topic, but speaking of kind of gutter and other kind of things starting, are there any updates on or is this something we could discuss at a future meeting? Kind of the conditions of the rail trail in spots where we're starting to see kind of deterioration in various places. Can we address you... that? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say, maybe we can address oh. that either as another topic or another yeah. meeting. But okay, I don't know that's fine, that's fine, okay. yeah, thanks. I just wanted to add, so the other thing under this line item is Crafts Avenue and um, Don and I haven't um, connected yet since I sent her, but we've been chatting about ways to, um, uh, test whether the mouth down at Crafts Avenue and, and um, South Street can be narrowed. There's not, it doesn't appear to be a reason why we need a left and a right turn lane at that corner and that mm -hmm. it would potentially um, slow traffic and um, not necessarily create a bike lane, but potentially just reallocate that extra lane to sidewalk or potentially mm -hmm. restaurant space. So that's another um, area where um, Don and I have been talking about potentially putting um, a temporary um, set of series of blocks to um, narrow that um, 
down to one lane. And that's sort of a precursor for the construction that's going to take place with the new apartment building behind here. And um, there'll be a, a slight adjustment in the alignment of this private driveway that comes around the roundhouse loop um, back into Crafts Avenue at that southern um, is that southern end. Um, so it's all sort of thinking about how that ultimate design might end up once that apartment construction begins. So. Elena? Yeah, that's super exciting. And I'll just add that I'm sure there are folks on this call, maybe Friends of Northampton Trails, um, maybe Michael DePasquale, who does a lot of work in making spaces in public places, um, would be interested in thinking about um, like a parklet there. I don't know. I mean, other than Bombay Royale, I'm not sure of other restaurants in that area that might be um, a good fit for outdoor dining at that particular intersection. Um, and But if Bombay Royale doesn't want it or other restaurants nearby don't want it, I think reaching out to the community and some of the nonprofits to help create that space um, to be super welcoming and maybe a little parklet. Thanks. Okay. Carolyn? Yeah. Um, uh, I guess what the one thing that I would like to say about this is that um, the one comment I heard about the new South Street, uh, you know, uh, that temporary um, placement of those barricades is that, uh, and this was from somebody, an older person who's driving, was not a complaint for, as from the vehicles, but safety of the bicyclists, um, noticing that cars could pull over once the barricade ends and, and you know, um, and bicyclists might not be aware that they were doing it or they might not be aware of bicyclists, which makes me think that um, when we think about the long-term purpose of all of this, it seems that a real focused educational plan, you know, something that really is communicating to the community that there is this shift happening, you know, that that as Donna says, many motorists are not very happy with, but that we would like to see, or many of us, I guess, would like to see this shift to getting out of your vehicle. I, I think some kind of plan, some kind of communication with the public generally really should be happening over time. And that that, you know, building awareness that this is where things, you know, this where the country is going, where the state is going, and where we should be going. Um, I don't know exactly what that looks like, but I know, I, I, I believe that that's something FNT would get behind. And I just think that it's a, it would be good to have a unified approach to, to communicating to the public. Um, and this is just one small example of that. Thanks. James? Uh, if, okay, um, I, just, I didn't know if there was gonna be a response to Freeman's question, but, um, or comment. Uh, just about going back to Crafts Avenue for a second then, if not, uh, I was just a little unclear if we were talking about the bottom of the hill or the top of the hill. Bottom, by by, by Royale. I see, okay. Where there's two lanes. So one left turn and one right turn, um, and it's a it's a wide mouth there at uh, where it intersects South Street. So basically, um, narrowing it down to a single lane um, onto the street. Yep. Thanks. Got it. Um. Okay. Um. All good things to think about and obviously a continuation of the conversation about how um, you know these design plans move forward and I think that in itself um, even if they're sort of disparate projects that um, all of it sort of combined starts um, I think visually providing cues about how there's shift in um, in allocation of space for pedestrians and bicycles so you've got the segments on King Street that aren't necessarily complete. You know, we've been getting some, I've heard some feedback from people saying, you know, that um, there's no no need for that because there's a bike path that's parallel on King Street. 
But, you know, that's, I think, part of the conversation, too, is that, you know, the more that we add this infrastructure to the network, the more apparent I think it is, and the more it fosters use of those, um, that infrastructure and those systems. So um, I think, come, you know, those, as these pieces come to fruition, um, that will help with the conversation about our, sh our shifting uh, mode of uh, transportation. Um, okay, the next item is an update of Valley Bike Share. I don't have a huge amount to update on, but you obviously know that um, we had to cut ties with Bewegan. Um, we've received the performance guarantee that we had, um, that we required them to put aside in a third party bank. The bank has set, sent us the money. It's not a whole lot of money, but it at least provides some ability to cover costs in the interim, potentially, um, and we hope provide um, um, a payment to our future operator. Um, what we, what I've decided um, more recently is that we have several um, potential prospects for operators which means we're going to have to go out to bid ultimately. The problem is we can't really go out to bid without knowing what the costs are because we can't let a contract until the money is there to back the contract. So um, I'm going to put together a request for information and send it out to potential operators who then, and that request will ask how much that operator would charge for um, operation so that we understand what that dollar amount is going to be, how we can potentially close the gap or seek, which means seeking um, state and federal funding potentially as part of the transportation system. It also means we have a better idea of what we need to um, look for in seeking sponsorships for either a title sponsor for the whole system, like other big cities typically have. Um, so I'm hoping that we can get an RFI out. I don't know. I don't want to jump the gun, but within the next month so that we can understand what those costs are. I've been having verbal conversations with these operators and have a little bit of a sense of what the cost is, but we really need more um, hard and fast numbers. So that piece is happening. Um, the bike share communities also really want a regional entity to take this over, which makes the most sense from my perspective that either PVPC or PVTA take this over um, for the region, since um, Northampton is really the smallest town in the entire region that's participating. That's not true. We have East Hampton and, um, and South Hadley. But anyway, we're not as big as Springfield or Holyoke. Um, so that piece is also moving ahead. So there might be a structural change, but we're doing all of these things in parallel. Um, all that's to say that bike share, we're targeting um, reopening in the spring of 2024, but I've also heard from operators that they could potentially, if we move quickly enough, potentially could get something out on the street in the fall. I don't know how realistic that is because it's really gonna cost a lot of money. So unless we have an angel donor um, to come in and say, I'm going to sponsor the whole thing and here's your money, that's going to be a hard lift to, um, to make um, before the spring. So that's that update. I will also say that I've had, um, I've been in contact and made great strides, I guess, in connecting with the back office tech support people who had been providing um, their, B. Wegan was their client and they were the ones that created the web app, um, the app, the web, they had all the data about the memberships, about the ridership, you know, point, you know, the origin and destinations, how many miles were um, traveled, all of that data. And they still have that and they will, are still um, interested in being a participant in this, which makes it a whole lot easier to think about yep. getting up and running because we don't have to recreate a data set or recreate even a software. They're still a player in the world. They have systems around Europe. They also um, 
are reaching out to the other B Wigan systems in the United States to provide them with their data. Um, the other interesting thing is that in the EU, um, they're required that the the data is the property of the municipalities, mm -hmm. including the financial data. And Bwega never gave that to us, but we have now since gotten that data from this tech company. So we know what the revenues were from coming in from the rides. So that's in a hugely helpful piece of information, I think going both for understanding what our costs are gonna be and also what um, potentially we could indicate to sponsors who want to know what the success is and what, whether there's been growth and there has been growth. Um, in fact, 2022 was the best year and it was tr trending in that direction for 2023 when they shut down. So um, I think all of that is good news, um, but we just need to um, figure out the funding piece. So that's my update on bike share. Thanks, Kim. Um, Elena? Yeah, it'd be helpful to just see, well, first of all, thanks for all your work on this. I know it's, complicated. There's a lot of um, stakeholders involved with the multiple municipalities, the tech company, the former operator of it all, and seems complex. So really appreciate you um, tackling this. Uh, I do see it as a really important transportation mode. I'm personally really disappointed to not have Valley Bike this year um, with a car light household. Um, we used it a lot um, for like one way um, transport, um, between Northampton and Florence mo most often. Um, but I will say it would be helpful to just see any materials or even have a ballpark number. Um, I work in philanthropy and have a few, um, foundations that I know are interested in bike, uh, infrastructure, and this could potentially fall within their wheelhouse. Um, but before approaching them, would want to have some sort of information um, to include in that email to them. Um, I know they they work a lot in like the social justice um, landscape as well as it relates to bike transportation. And so um, I think having Springfield and Holyoke as part of the system is really important. Um, anyways, that's just to say when you do have any information um, to please share it out with me and everyone else on the call, um, because I do think there's some opportunities um, for corporate or private um, money to be moved into to run this. That's great. Um, really good to know. I, I'm actually in the middle of putting together. I didn't know I'd be in marketing at all. <laughs> I took on this job, but I'm I'm putting together like a two page um, sort of snapshot for the purposes of providing um, information to potential sponsors, it's, this all ge um, was generated because um, I had a conversation with Pooley Dick, and they certainly can't be more of a sponsor than they've already been, but we talked about the fact that their parent company is a lot bigger than they are, and they said that they would reach out and go up the ladder to um, the big Boston parent. And, but he wanted some, you know, that sort yeah. of snapshot data right. and information about the system. So um, I'm hoping to have that together by the end of this week. So I'd be happy to share it with the group as well. I'm going to send it to, you know, um, the other people who have said that they could potentially help in this arena because I don't want to leave any stone unturned right. for that purpose. Um, so I'll keep you posted. Okay. Um, if nothing else on that, I guess we'll go to the next item, which I think is the four foot passing rule. And I know that um, um, I think Donna probably has some information and you probably wanted to talk about that as well, right? Oh, well, I don't need to talk. Okay. I, just need, I just need us to talk about it. Okay. So okay. Donna can start if she wants to, or we can start and Donna can chime in however, however we want to do it. But I just thought, you know, back to Freeman's point that education and culture change and, um, you know, 
uh, united front is helpful and important i wanted to have a conversation here so that we could take it somewhere else um yeah i'm just trying to pull up um an email here um so this is a uh, obviously a new law that mass dot is uh heavily behind um so we're gonna jump on board here and we just pulled out grant paperwork i actually just submitted it um for signage so you can see these signs um if i get someone to put them up um with my staffing issues there um but we asked for 86 signs um which are going to say motorists do four feet to pass um and we're going to have a picture of a bicycle so that's the MOTCD uh, standard sign for the light on the black lettering so anyway i requested 86 of these which now cot is going to give it to us for free um and then i have a list of uh 33 streets that we were going to go on um and there are you know heavily trafficked roads like you know glendale and west farm sylvester chesterfield florence main street and leeds river road reservoir out of one kind of little things that we all you know scores of locations here but um, you'll actually see multiple signs on some of the streets, like on the road, I'm going to have six signs. So what we tried to do is, I mean, we assessed the entire city, and this is actually a fairly significant level of effort. We had to turn this around for three because there was a, um, a grant deadline, and then we have to provide the engineering justification for each line we're requesting. So it's not just like, oh, send me a hundred signs and I'll throw these things up. Um, we have to like really prove where we're going to put those garbage the system there. So, um, so anyway, I am not sure when we're going to take delivery of the um, the permit communication standpoint. You know, once we receive them, um, we could think about some sort of um, public announcement in the um, mayor's office to put a statement out or something. Um, that's like that we just need those grants, we just need to sign. Here's a picture of them. We probably will be installing them in numerous locations. Um, so that is my update on this. Thanks. Thanks for your work on that. Yeah, I know that Brett, you would ask, I think, about signage and what could be done. So that's, and then we got this. Notice that sure, MassDOT's going to help us. <laughs> so thanks, Donna. Um, James. James. Oh yeah, I just wanted to add my thanks. Uh, this is a, a long time coming. Uh, Mass Bike has worked for many years very hard to get that law passed, and uh, it, and it, as you all know, it is incredibly hard to get a law passed in Massachusetts. Ninety nine percent of bills literally fail every year. It took a long time to get it through. It happened. And I'm delighted that Northampton is is being now so proactive to uh, to really make the most of that new law. So thank you for that, James. Yeah, and I I can't stress enough like what a level of effort this is. You know, everyone talks about like grants, grants. But, oh, there's all this money. Like they make you work for this. I mean, this was days of work. I mean, this was like. We, we actually had to stop what we were doing, but like, everything needs to stop so we can pay attention to this, you know, so, so we can generate this, this list of locations and, and justify exactly where these signs are going to go, you know, but this is kind of the conflicting priorities, you know, sometimes that's part of it, you know, but we're not moving fast enough, you know, but this is, um, but we really had to jump through some groups, so now there's a ton of work done this so and you know, here, um, I, I, I do want to express my appreciation for, for what you did on this. Thanks. Okay, I think the last item on the agenda is um, uh, for Freeman. <laughs> Talk about art installations along the bike path. Um, I'm not sure exactly what to, to say other than uh, FNT has just uh, worked with um, Kim Carlino, who had a, a vision that she shared with me when she was painting the 
the designs at the crosswalks in Florence about these tiny galleries. And, um, and so now there are five tiny galleries that have been placed along the trail from behind Stop and Shop up until uh, Bridge Road just before Look Park. Uh, and Kim has worked with a jewelry group of artists to get applications. And so every two months now, um, there will be a new artist occupying one of those galleries, although some of them may have uh, exhibits by the same artist over a period of time. And yes. already there's lots of participation and comments from the public uh, in some of those locations. Some of the artists have uh, journals. One has a journal and, and there's other forms of participation. So, um, uh, you know, Carolyn, uh, through Tom and Nice, uh, and the DPW have been really helpful in terms of helping us uh, do the dig safe and get the permitting, and and that's been a wonderful thing, and it's something that we hope to do, hope to do more of, and would love to hear folks' comments or experience or any feedback. Um, and the one other thing I would say is that one of the the negatives that we've heard about doing any of these. Interventions. Um, um, is to try to avoid uh, putting them in places where there's a more natural, um, you know, environment. So I think we've done a fairly good job of doing that where there's already a fair amount of human intervention um, taking place. And we hope to, to have more. Um, and Carolyn, was there anything else that you wanted me to, that you thought I should focus on or... Or is this in response to my just kind of uh, question about it? Yeah, it was just really sort of response and just um, wanting to highlight um, this um, great work. I think it's exciting. It sort of brings a new element to sort of the um, people's walk, stroll, bike along the network and sort of um, it, um, just is, is um, a fun thing, so. Thanks. Yes. Thanks for your work on it. Yeah, thanks for asking. And thanks for your support. I mean, it's been really helpful. Tom is, was amazing. He was the one who uh, actually operated the, the power auger that we used to, to drill oh, the that. posts. So <laughs> I was glad that it was him and not me. Yeah. Uh, but it's been a great op opportunity. And Kim's vision was wonderful. And so far, the response has been really Great. Yesterday, I was by the the gallery that's because uh, the the gallery by behind Stop and Shop needed some help, and and I was getting in, even engaged with the conversation with a second couple of second graders about uh, their interest in what's going on here. So every time I go to out to look at them, there's there's somebody who has comment. Right. And the one by the way by the pedal people uh, near Straw Avenue is about squirrels and people writing messages to squirrels you definitely want to check that one out <laughs> boy <laughs> thanks um elena i'll just quickly add that um to piggyback on freeman uh fnt is hosting our monthly bike ride tomorrow night um where we meet at pulaski park at six o'clock and the theme of this month is to go to all of the tiny art galleries um so we'll be riding up the trail and taking a look at the the art. So just wanted to add that plug in for our bike ride tomorrow night. Thanks. Um, I just I just had a question come to mind. I didn't um as I'm visualizing them, um I'm trying to think about the heights they are and wondering if they're when you mentioned second graders, that's what sort of triggered my thought here. Are they um Visible for those in wheelchairs. Yes, as a matter of fact, the design that was one of the 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 woman, um, uh, Aliona Skirpa, who's on the uh, Arts Council, actually did some of the design work for for them, and the builders uh, were were attentive to accessibility. So okay. yeah, that, that that they are at that height. At least that was the intent. Great. To use Thanks. those guidelines. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. 
I know we only have a minute left. Are there some items I can suggest for a future meeting or maybe sure. kind of propose those at this point? Um, one question I had is kind of the follow-up on the bike garage. We had talked about that and the kind of plans for what, how that might, and maybe fundraising for it. Um, so that's one thing I wanted to add in the mix. Um, another one to, to kind of just kind of put out there, we talked a, a couple of years ago, Carolyn, about whether or not it was feasible to get data on the occupancy in the garage that's available on the web as opposed to just from the signs. And I just wonder whether or not that might be feasible as a way of getting information about that um, uh, availability in the garage through some other mechanism. Um, and the third question I had for future discussion was um, the kiosks and things and just kind of the, the entropy level and vandalism on those and whether or not for some of those that have been tagged, um, whether or not there might be some kind of approach we could be thinking about for those. Because I know some of them have gotten tagged. I'm thinking in particular the one by the intersection with King Street and the rail trail um, near Stop and Shop. Um, but I'm just wondering about that. So the, yeah, bike shelter and the fundraising, whether or not it's possible to get information from the API on the garage occupancy, um, and then kind of this kind of a question. The, those kiosks have been just a huge success, um, and I think nicely complement these other these other parts. But I was just wondering about other kiosk maintenance and replacement. What, um, I'm sorry, what kiosks? So we have the kiosks that look a little bit like bridges with yeah. the maps on them. Oh, the map kiosks. Yes, you're saying yes. Been... Some of them have been tagged. And... Okay, yeah. Well, so you know, Tom in uh, in our office here um, has periodically gone and cleaned those. Okay, so um, that could also be a those things. Okay, yeah. Uh, we also had talked earlier in this meeting about uh, Donna's question of where else yeah. might uh, the temporary block treatments be interesting yeah. to try. Okay. And and last but not least, I'm not, uh, it, it might be helpful to just reconsider. I know there are very few options for times for our meeting, but just to make sure we're going to be quorum full uh, in the fall. Continuing at this time. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. Any other comments? Okay, great. Thanks for coming. See you all soon. Thanks and everybody, bye -bye. of course, any well, we can do uh, whatever you want. If you want to come in person, that's fine too. So hybrid approach. So. Yeah, just as few cancellations as possible. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but before we go, can I just ask, you know, rather than waiting till next month, if you guys have any ideas about where I can drop these blocks? Let's talk about that sooner rather than later. Because like the clock's ticking on the summer here. So I, I just don't want to spend the resources to drop them for you know weeks. I want them dropped yep. for months. Okay, great. Thank you.